You've landed at the 13 Moons Women's Temple podcast with your hosts, Sam and Leela. That's good. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, it's good to see you. It's good to see you in the flesh. Well, not in the flesh, but you know what I mean. Actually see, see you. In my, my <clears throat> digital avatar, my, my real digital So I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> doesn't matter <laughs> uh, mm, I, I was thinking I do you know we don't really have time for meditation but we might just we might just take some deep breaths so mm. before we get to the center we might just take a breath in through the nose and out through the nose and in through the mouth and out through the mouth and in through the nose and out through the mouth and in through the mouth and out through the nose. Good. That's good. Um, so, yeah, I heard you say we didn't tell anyone we were coming on. We just wanted to jump on. We haven't got long, but we wanted to say hello this week because we said we were going to last week. And that's kind of like if we do this, we'll get better at doing it more. But actually fine and nice sometimes for people not to have to give too much time to listen to us, but just to be able to get a little rundown of... Um, uh, some of the stuff that's occurring in our heads that might also be of interest to you. And if it's not, that's totally fine. Um, fun fact, today is a five-day in tantric numerology. Mm. That's in interesting. It's a physical body day. Um, mm. And so it's a teacher day. And, and it's a Jupiter day. So it's a Thursday. It's a day of expansion. So yeah, we were talking about the physical body earlier. So it's just interesting to observe the way that the physical body is responding to whatever is occurring around you. Your messages will come through the physical body today. Um, yeah, thought that was a, a good thing to think about. Yeah, <clears throat> I like that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Particularly what I was saying about my body. Fe I'm feeling my body. <laughs> which is good mm. and I, I i feel um and i um i've been talking about this a bit but um and i do want to talk about what's actually happening in the sky because it's just kind of interesting and quite important so we've just finished that that eclipse cycle and of course the eclipse doesn't finish just you know the moment the eclipse finishes everything stops it doesn't just happen like that we'll still feel the effects for quite some time um, and actually, this is always, you know, one eclipse is always um, really preparing us or ending or um, part of the process of the bigger picture. And so we're always looking at the bigger picture anyway. Mm. But this week, um, you know, very much how it feels to me, we, we kind of went into a cold snap um, here in um, where we live um, in Queensland. And it's really dropped us into um, very much that winter state and that's perfect because we are at this point so when we go from Sawain it's from Sawain to the winter solstice that we actually drop into the deep dark winter which doesn't feel deep and dark because we live in Queensland and we still get sun in the middle of the day but it definitely has that effect on our body and we definitely are feeling that within ourselves and we have to honor that so once we hit the solstice, and a lot of the time we see the winter solstice, we go, oh, that's the darkest day. But that's actually the point when the light's going to start coming back. Mm. That's actually the beginning. <clears throat> this is the point of, um, of composting, of decaying, of um, sitting, in, sitting in it, really. It's not very much about doing. It's not about achieving at all definitely not about starting new projects it's actually about the realization of and maybe some people are having some realization that i really don't want to do that my relationship's not working 
my job doesn't feel right. I, it's going to be the, the kind of sensations that you're having and that which you want to shed or, or that that is already decaying is observation of decay. We don't like any of those words either. We don't like rotting. We don't like the word decay. Compost we're kind of okay with because it's become cool to compost. But we don't want to lift the lid on it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it has all those bugs in it. Do you know what I mean? And they're eating things. So we don't want to talk about that. Um, and actually, that's where we're at. I think that's very good to think about. So in ourselves, we want to be honoring this, this time of, of the year for us, the cycle, this season. And we want to be honoring the season so that we're ready to begin the process. So you might have a very clear idea that you do not want to be doing something or you don't want to be in a relationship or that something is just feeling yucky. And it might be that you may make a shift towards letting go of that, but you certainly don't need to be figuring out what you're meant to do next. Don't do that. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, there's a couple of things I want to say on that. Um, the the process of composting um it's an alchemical process and then the black earth that is that remains once the once the compost is has uh, is completed once the process is completed the black earth is like magic it holds so much heat and so much energy it's like a renewed so everything that was old and moldy and rotting and and stinky and you put it in the compost and you let the worms and the bugs do their thing and then you come back and you look at it, um, you know, uh, I don't know, a few weeks later, it has been broken down to the most fertile black earth and that is a magical alchemical process that we then take that earth and we put it on our gardens and it springs the the new life and um and if you were to actually use that in a chemistry sense in a scientific sense you could derive so much heat energy from the compost that you could actually use that for for science and 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 for i mean we're using it for, for growing in our gardens but you can use this to to make metals and to to draw energy we could use this if we had some very forward thinking chemists in our midst we could use this as a form of energy for our homes rather than electricity like the power that's in the in the black earth is just phenomenal and we just don't understand but if we look at that in a personal sense mm. like if we're going through this composting on in a personal sense you have to remember that if we don't feed what it is that has come to its end into the composting of our own um, design, what is there, what nutrients are we putting into our future to be able to draw from for the fertility of what is going to, to come next? And so it's actually about really going into the rotting process. And yeah, like you say, I mean, making some time to tend to it because anyone who has had compost knows that it's not quite as simple as just bunging stuff in. It actually, compost is even more effective if you contemplate layering it with certain things. Oh, well, you're ironing on it. <laughs> really <laughs> so sometimes you have to do certain things to add other <clears throat> chemicals to it. Well, that's kind of the same as the process we're in right now. And so that's exactly it. And we do, you're absolutely right. They, they, I'm pretty sure that they do. There is a fuel that is derived from this process. And I was thinking as you're saying that um, in Ireland, when I lived in Northern Ireland, we had peat. We used to use peat bricks on our fires. It's kind of the same kind of thing. Um, anyway, so yeah, absolutely. So we are preparing the fuel to give us what we need to move uh, keep going gently or sitting in that so that we can get to the winter solstice then from the winter solstice after that then we can start preparing for spring we're not preparing for that yet we're just in this process we actually need to sit and we need to be still being still and being quiet is something that is incredibly hard in our society and if you are listening to this you are therefore on social media and that's part of the problem 
but we're glad that you're listening to us. But I think we do actually have to be making the time to turn off at this point. We need to be actually going to bed when it gets dark and sitting in the darkness, making time to just even have the light off and lay there awake rather than thinking you need to fill the time with reading or doing something. My dog is desperately trying to get my attention. <laughs> no. <laughs> I love it. Um, now what I wanted to, what I want to try and um, unpack, because you sent me those. Keep going. With, with, I want, Sorry, I want to go. moment the astrology of, of where we're at and what things are occurring in the sky. And, um, I want to unpack this. We're just going to unpack this for you sort of live, really. And this is the sort of combination of real sky and then actually happening. So at the moment, yeah, the sun is in conjunction with Uranus. Now, tropical astrology, um, they are going to say, or they are saying that this is in in the real sky or post and um, these pictures we in the little mm -hmm. um yep post these pictures so you can have a look it's actually happening in aries which is very interesting so basically um in a nutshell this energy can be um it can make us feel a bit edgy nervous i really these are really good words um, this is Pam Gregory saying this, but this is about it being Taurus, but I think it still relates to to the Sun-Uranus conjunction, and we're going to define what's happening with the Aries energy. But edgy, nervous, restless, and like something is building up. So this is going to be occurring, um, and it's going to be coming um, as we move towards the end of Mars. Now apparently there's going to be a big shift of energy um, up towards the end of May. So there's going to be a big shift of energy as we come through that. But what I want you to talk about is what the Sun and Uranus being conjunct in Aries will be bringing about for us. So I think it's um, potentially, well, we can either see that it's like a ramming. We could feel like, I feel there could be from the Southern Hemisphere point of view, could feel like you're ramming your head against a brick wall a bit. So if there are things in your life that really do need to be cleared, you might just keep feeling like you're coming up with that. I'm ramming my head. And a sort of a, a childlike or, yeah, like a teenage desire to just get on with the next thing, but being impatient, like a teenager. Yeah, fully. And Uranus has really got a, a long history with um, revolutions. And and in this Aries energy, we may, you know, really start to feel like we just need the goddamn revolution to happen already. Um, but, you know, and, and it's that, yeah, that impatience that it's probably not coming as fast as, as you want it or as you need it. Um, and, and also that's great going to lend us to want to be you know thinking too big we're thinking too global where where we're thinking like i need to change the world or the world needs to change or you know and it's just so impossible there's no solution if we're ever thinking that there's something inherently wrong with the world like one individual person, but this is what we do. And this is a real kind of problem in modern spirituality um, uh, rhetoric is that we feel like we need to change everything, but we're not even stopping to contemplate actually what that is literally meaning because it's just, it's just not possible. But we go on these big and, and even redefining, like if we're thinking about I need a change in my life, I'm going to make a grand gesture and I'm going to change. I'm going to have, a, you know, we tend to have big awakening points when we realize life is not working. Um, and I think I'm going to change everything and I'm going to be, you know, a warrior for the world and I'm going to take on, you know, healing everybody and healing the world. And, and it's actually just a little bit quite misguided. And, and this energy I think could be quite um, exasperated 
um, with this. Well, yeah, and I mean, Uranus is the shattering of preconceptions, like the absolute shattering of our of of what we thought was true. And then when we've got a sun energy, so we're then looking at probably anything that we've ever relied on. Anything that has ever been stable. Everything that has just been the same forever. Now, I just, so just let's just forget about where it is in the sky, but just contemplate that. Sun conjunct Uranus. Everything that we've ever believed, relied on. Sun being the father figure, the masculine. And then basically, Basically, a shattering of these preconceptions that we had, and and then to add into the mix, we we'll have we have the Moon and Pluto in Capricorn, which is structure, stability, everything that we have ever known, the systems that we have in place, and so <laughs> like it's 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 a lot. Yeah. where we can we're coming to a state where collectively we can start to we can start to really understand that the systems our modern way of life the way that we live in a systemized um structure is actually not working and and change has to come but change is not going to come fast and change takes massive courage we were sort of talking about this, you and I, Sam, a little bit, like when we're looking at the education system and our children. If this is something that I don't believe in, do I have the courage to actually make the change for my children's future, of which the future is impossible to see? And this is another aspect to this is with all of the changes that are happening in the digital technology arena, the future is unknown. Well, it's the, and, and this is, um, this is interesting, actually. You're going to have to help me with um, where I'm sort of thinking. But I feel like as well we are, and Mercury is still retrograde. Um, when does Mercury go direct? Mm, it's not until, like, it's at least over another week. Yeah, that's right. I think it's five days, actually. And so mm, it's just interesting because I feel exactly what you're saying. We're being, we might see that we need to change things but actually we don't really know if we want to make those changes. So we, we could have a sense of just wanting to stick our head in the sand and just go, la, 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 la. <laughs> Cause that's easier than actually making the choices. Exactly like you said, if I don't believe in this system, what does that mean? And actually that's a lot of work. So we, our concept is that's a lot of work because it's something we haven't done before. Anyway really the way that things are astrologically um, moving we could say that there is this um, concept or this um, inclination towards there being a massive shattering of these preconceived truths to the point where you might not actually have a choice as to whether you need to change things it will just happen mm -hmm. so where we have that I feel where you are feeling already within you, especially at this time between Sawain and, um, and um, the solstice, if one of the things that you're feeling is, I can't go on like that, it just isn't my truth, it really isn't resonating, but I can't see the way through it. If that is actually what's coming for you in your personal world, so in the, you know, in the planetary system within you, things will occur that mean that you will just be shifted towards making the change that you need. You don't actually need to worry about how that's going to happen. And you don't actually need to complicate your mind by thinking that you need to come up to the, with the solution. You actually are just being invited to hand this over and say, I, I don't know what to do. This doesn't feel right. Show me the way. And actually at this time of the year and the stage that we're at and with the planetary aspects that are supporting us, we are going to be shown the way. And it could well be that that's shocking. But ultimately, if we sit with how we're truly feeling, it's exactly the same when the pandemic happened. Exactly the same. We all said, many of us said, God, I really wanted this. So this is 
is where you've got to start thinking, what have I been secretly wishing? <laughs> Let's just to be clear, we didn't want the pandemic, but we wanted the break from the life. We wanted to be be able to just sit at home and Well no, we wanted and time off. Every, the time off. Everyone kept saying, When does it stop? When can we get off the rat race? We were given the off, and then everyone started to go, Ah, I don't really want this off. But the point is we were we were given it. We were given what we wanted. Now many of us have found some of you I mean I feel quite fortunate I haven't had to get back onto the rat race at times it feels a bit like that but I feel like I'm still very fortunately haven't had to but some people have had to get back on and I think for them that's where we're going to start to go hang on am I actually in my true my truth am I actually doing what I want to do and this is where I feel very passionate at the moment that we need to be contemplating practices within our a yoga practice if you're a yogi this practice of jivan mukt of living whilst we're alive of, of actually experiencing the fullness of life whilst we're living not waiting for the next thing waiting or when i do this i'll get this mm. but we actually have to realize that being awakened comes now it comes now not in the future only can come in this moment and are you living this moment and it's very, very easy to get caught up in there but I can't it's so you know if I had this money if I had this opportunity if I didn't live here blah blah we can all do this but if you just get quiet and if you can just come out from the endless searching outside of yourself for the answers the truth is going to come and help you get free mm. I think yeah so there's a <clears throat> there's a social media post that we're going to be putting up um, either later today or this evening and it's addressing the concept of worrying and how worrying manifests as stress and then how stress manifests as anxiety and so um, so look out for that because the point is, is that if we don't address the worrying, it will manifest as a stress. It becomes a stress. A worry is something that we, we can deal with. When it gets to the point where we've realized we don't actually have control over the problem, then it becomes a stress. And then if we don't, and if we do what most of us do and just ignore the thing, because that means that we're not having to feel the powerlessness to the problem, what ultimately ends up happening is that the body goes into a state of anxiety and the nervous system has been on high alert for far too long. And that is the point to come out of that means you have to actually make a radical change in your life. We can't actually think our way out of anxiety or to think our way out of that state of nervous system arousal. And, and that, that is the point where there is a breakdown or a breakthrough and that is that spiritual awakening or awakening kind of moment where it's all crumbling down this is really this is the, the composting this is the breakdown period because your body has just gone enough and if, if you can realize that and you can act on that i love i love the Sorry about the barking. I love thinking about anxiety like a flag. And if you can see the flag, it's like, okay, I'm going to pay attention to that now. And the more you become very rehearsed at doing that, the far more awakened you will be and you'll fast track yourself back to health and well-being. But it does mean that you actually need to take a step away from your life to realise because you're in the eye of the hurricane. You can't see the problems when you're in, in the stuff. And so stepping out of that, going it's like what a holiday helps you to do or a retreat. And, and, that, and that's it. Like sometimes we need help. Sometimes we need someone else to hold us. I don't think that we, I don't think we need someone else to do it for us. I don't think we need someone else to guide us as in to actually do tell us what we need. But we do sometimes need someone else to say, sit, 
be still. <laughs> I will hold you in this space. I will keep you safe and warm and quiet. And that, that there is, is, is really the essence of, yeah, interestingly, the, the, the Kundalini restorative. It's the concept of you can be held, not for us to tell you what to do, but for you to feel the ultimate sense of quietness and stillness and actually have that realization, that reset yourself. And, and that it is the time to be finding space for those types of activities right now. Um, uh, unfortunately, we have to stop there because Lilo cannot rest any longer. <laughs> I have to rush off and be a mum for the afternoon. <laughs> you're, be, you're a bit late doing it. So um, we'll, we'll hold it here and we'll come back. Um, we, we are, our plan is to come back Tuesday, I hope. We'll be here. I'll just keep saying it. And um, thank you for listening if you're listening. Um, please let us know what you think and um, yeah, what your thoughts are and your experiences at this time. And um, we're sending you lots of love in this period mm -hmm. of decay. Um, yes, it's nice to be here with you. Mm, beautiful. beautiful. Satnam, so much Drive, love. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you for taking the time to be with us on this podcast episode. These are sound bites and conversations about things we think are important to support the collective ascension towards more love, acceptance, hope and harmony on the planet Earth. Together we can continue to support each other through conversations that need to be held. If you've enjoyed this episode, please do share it with your people. We would love it if you subscribe to our channel and even rate the podcast if you feel called to. You can also find us and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube and Spotify just by searching the 13 Moons Women's Temple.